wild. Yeah, expect that one around this time, 2020, around there. Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. So Resident Evil 7 Biohazard is the newest Resident Evil game from Capcom and a very much needed return to form for the Resident Evil franchise. Resident Evil came out in the mid 90s and it was crazy. It started a genre. Survival horror didn't exist before this. I mean, there were a couple of games that utilized it, but it wasn't called survival horror. And then Resident Evil came out and they were like, this is a spearhead. This is a staple. We need to name a genre now. So it's, it's survival horror. And they were survival horror up through about four. And then after that, they became action games for five and six and it confused people and people didn't like it as much as they did before like no one played resident evil one and praised it for being an action-packed action game and finally realizing this capcom was like i think we should go back to what made resident evil one great so now they have with resident evil 7 biohazard in resident evil 7 he plays a dude named ethan whose wife has vanished she's been gone for a while and then he gets a video from her it's like oh my gosh she's still alive i need to go find her and that leads him to a creepy ass mansion called the baker estate and now resident Evil 7 survival horror. And when I say survival horror, I mean it. This is old school Resident Evil, everyone. I mean, you're ammo pinching. You're like, I have a shotgun shell, but I'm gonna try to use my handgun. Cause you know you're gonna need those shotgun shells for later. And this really does harken back to old school Resident Evil. There's some layout, some design in this mansion where you look at it, you're like, that's from Resident Evil 1. Like the main room has a staircase that goes up and around. You're like, that's from Resident Evil 1. There was a hallway where a staircase went up and then this door, this room's right around the corner. I'm like, that's from Resident Evil 1. The biggest difference is this this game is in first person. You play as Ethan, but it's in first person. The other prime chapters of the Resident Evil series have been in some form of third person. This is first person. And although it's obviously a way for them to push VR because you can put it on the VR headset if it's in third person, it doesn't really have the effect. The advantageous thing for this is you get to really project yourself into the shoes of Ethan. In the other third person Resident Evil games, like in the first one, I played as Jill Valentine or Chris Redfield. In the second one, I played Leon Kennedy or Claire Redfield. I was the character I was supposed to be. In this one, I never felt like Ethan, I felt like me. I was in this place, walking around, scared out of my mind. If I'm not killing monsters, I'm running from the bakers. The bakers, holy shit. So you're in the baker estate. The owners of estate are the bakers, and the bakers are pretty much the family from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. They're frightening, they're creepy. They may be zombified, pain-worshipping backwards idiots, but they are zombified, pain-worshipping backwards idiots. Minus the zombified. They're not really zombified, but they're pretty much immortal. They're hard to kill. You just have to run from them. There was this hallway, and I was like, if I was making this game, I would have someone crash through this wall and run Right when I thought that, this dude crashed through the wall. He's like, where are you going, boy? Yeah! He starts swinging this thing at me. Speaking of zombified and not zombified, you don't take out zombies in this game. And zombies were in the 90s because zombies were getting cool. And so they're like, all right, we're just going to make zombies in Resident Evil. And one could argue zombies are still huge and in. The monsters in this game are not really zombies. They're these black tar creep monster blob things that look like they killed Tasha Yar. Same rules apply, though. Shoot, aim for the head because that's how you're going to take them down. A disappointment factor for me is I could have gone for different monster designs in the game. In terms of the main monsters you run across in this game, you have, you know, the black tar monsters. Then you have black tar monsters that have a big hook hand thing that jab you. Then you have black tar monsters that are really skinny and they can jump on the walls. Really, it's the same creature design throughout the entire game with a couple of variant elements in there. And just like old school Resident Evil fashion, the plot is really unfolded through files that you find, pictures that you find. There are these VHS tapes. You pop in a VHS tape and then you play what's in the VHS tape. I thought that that was a really cool way of filling in the gap of story. You're like, oh, that happened before this, hasn't he? That's right, kids. VHS tapes. Ask your parents. And you do run into what I ran into in the old Resident Evil game, so I'm not even gonna say it's a flaw, it's just a thing, is that it's so survival horror and so ammo pinching, you're just like, I need to find my ammo. Do not be conservative with your psychostimulants, folks. There are these little pills that you take, they're psychostimulants, and they will show you where items are, like they'll highlight the items, like, hey, there's an item there, there's an item there, you can see through walls. You can see the item markers through the walls, rather. It's not not like you have Superman x-ray vision. Point is, it's easier to find ammo with them. I didn't use all of them. So, hey, feel free to use them. But that's what I'm talking about. You want to pinch ammo, herbs, first aid spray. By the end of the game, you have a surplus of a lot of stuff. Admittedly, I could have gone a little more balls to the wall with my shotgun because I had a lot of shotgun shells by the end of the game. My grenade launcher thing, I, I never used it. Could have used that. I got a 44 mag with some ammo. I was like, oh yeah, I'm ready. Never used that. It just kind of made me laugh because in Resident Evil 1, 2, the old school Resident Evil games, I was always like, ooh, the ammo. And then by the end, I'm like, like, oh, I could have used more ammo. This game has some puzzles in it, as Resident Evil was known for. I could have gone for the puzzles to be a little more involved. Like, if you're gonna give me a puzzle, give me a hard puzzle. It'll make me figure that shit out. This one's like, oh, I know exactly how to, oh, there you go, puzzle solved. Kind of feels like a wasted opportunity in the sense that I don't think this is for kids. It's obviously for adults. It's a Resident Evil game that's mature and blood.
reality and graphics, so let's just give us some adult puzzles. And eh, next time, I suppose. But really, the star of this game is the atmosphere and tone. When you're going through these hallways, you hear shit all around you, you're just like, I'm scared out of my mind. Nothing has to actually be coming after you for you to be afraid that something's going to be coming after you. That's the mark of true horror right there. Really, guys, Resident Evil 7 Biohazard is fantastic, and it's important for the Resident Evil franchise going forward. Capcom needs to know that, yes, this did what, good job. This is where you should keep Resident Evil. Let's keep doing this. You can make the next game third person or first person. That doesn't, I, I don't care. What I care about is survival horror versus action. And survival horror is definitely what Resident Evil should be. And that's definitely what this game is. I had a great time playing this game. It's excellent. Resident Evil 7 Biohazard is definitely worth buying at full price. Don't even need to wait for a sale, man. Just go buy it. All right, guys. So Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. Have you played it? What did you think about it? Where does it rank? in your Resident Evil hierarchy. Whatever you think, comment below. Let me know. Thank you for being patient. I really appreciate it. I do still play games. I just... Time. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more.